G'day and welcome back to Torment Thursdays. We finished a fight last time round, so... Oh, we didn't even finish a fight. We avoided a fight, and then we had the inevitable pick one parent aspect of uh, the intro sequence, so... We picked Callous Stage, because I don't think we've done that. I mean, well, the, the long one I did certainly didn't do that, so... Uh, she's already urging us to head up to the Order of Truth, and there's Otoro, who kind of greeted us last time. This is kind of an interesting uh, downside of this big long line under someone's name. That is a mess. I mean, I guess if you're zoomed in, it's less of a mess, but um, we aren't normally. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick up Tiber here. Because he's a companion. Pacing the edges of the crowd is a paunchy old soldier with a swaggering stride. At the moment, however, his jauntiness seems overshadowed by worry, and he alternates between watching the execution and searching the crowd as if looking for a miracle. Then his eyes light on you. I say, you look like someone who believes in justice. How'd you like to help a poor soul wrongfully condemned? Hey, he's got a voice now. Interesting. I say. Okay. I'm gonna try to vaguely keep with that voice. What kind of help do you need? I don't need anything, but my friend there on the platform is dying. His nightmares his the nightmares his executioners have induced in him spill from him with every word he speaks and wrap around him like a snake. He glances at the execution. I know there are but a few strands around him now, but in a few days' time, they'll choke the life out, out of him. I cannot imagine a more horrible way to die. Well, that's not true. I have an imagination that would shame a sailor. He leans in. You'll need to be swift and willing to hold justice above law, but there is a way to save him, if you'll hear me out. Why are you helping him? Is friendship not reason enough? He declares, then his shoulders sag and he hangs that. Actually, to tell the truth, there's more to it than that. I'm partly to blame for him being up there, and guilt's a strong motivator, eh? Um. Why? Um. What's your plan? A simple one, but it requires nerve. Listen. He lowers his voice. It would be nothing to ask for someone of your noble demeanor to masquerade as a city official and ask the council clerk for an archived copy of Hidden Old Stay of Execution. Once you have it, I'll write out a fresh one and add Reese's name. Then we'll present it to the overseer here, and poor Reese will be set free. He spreads his hand. There you have it. A foolproof, risk-free plan. Um, sounds like an extremely risky... Would it be simpler to... Talk to the crowd at the execution, convince them to rise up and free Reese. You're welcome to try, friend, but leave me out of it. Sega's cliff crowds are notoriously bloodthirsty, and the execution officials are not known for their sense of humor. You might regret it later, and he'll be alone you'll be alone when you did. Alright, I'll help you. I mean, we did this last time, but I'm gonna try and rile up the crowd. Excellent. You think you'll uh, then you'll need a proper story and a badge of office. Fortunately, I have the first, and you can buy the second from Sangalin, the clothing merchant in Government Square. Once you have a badge of office, you'll be tell the council clerk you're from the Judicial Oversight Committee, looking into the corruption and the commutation of capital sentences. The stay you're asking for is that of a notorious gangster named Cole Carden, who was mysteriously set free a few years ago. When you get Cole's stay of execution, I'll make a copy of Theresa's name on it, and you can give it to the overseer who'll set him free. You see? Simple. Now, if you'll let me join you, I'd be happy to show you around the city and help you with all this. Whatever else you have going on. What do you say? Sure. It'll be my pleasure, but let's hurry. There's not a moment to lose. Reese does not have much time. There we go. So, here's Tiber. I think they've adjusted his appearance now. Um, let's have a look at him. And he's got armor and mantle. So he can't actually mess with his look too much. That's interesting. Um, and I think the same applies to Callistus. Yeah, cannot be unequipped. Okay. So let's look at his character sheet. 
So here's a rogue. He's, well, not a rogue, a jack. He's got flex skills, so we can adjust, uh, basically give him a skill um, for one day, uh, which could be useful. Uh, he's also very trained in deception. Uh, he's got Sucker Punch, which lets him do damage, uh, especially extra damage if they're already dazed. You can snare a target and push them towards you rather than running towards them. I can see that being useful. Um, he's got one speed edge, right? He's got Faint, which uh, basically is an attack that's defended by willpower. Okay. And Elocutioner. Everyone else gets a bonus. Just a, a slight bonus on Deception, Intimidation, and Persuasion. That's pretty cool. Okay. So. That means if we now talk to various people. Excited Man. This man watches the execution with fevered eyes. He shakes his fist. Traitor! Traitor to the city! As you approach him, he gives you a savage grin. Nothing better than seeing a traitor die, eh? Do you truly care if he's a traitor? Or do you just like watching men tortured to death? How dare you! It's justice that's important to me and protecting my city! And justice is always... Equally, and not equally in sacred scripts. I bet the rich never pay for their crimes around here. You've got a point there. Never seen any highlight, high side of spill like guts on the platform, or heard of any of them being accused of treason. What do you know that I don't? This poor fool took the fall for someone else. It's a mockery of Sagus' pride. We should free him. So, he's got the best. Ch so, Tiber's got the best chances. Right, and... Wow. Okay, so that's plus 20%. Interesting. I'm, I'm going to use Tiber here. Do I, uh, yeah, you know what. I don't care. Let's just push all the way through. Definitely convince him. This is a guy that I couldn't convince last time. Ah, it's us small fish always taking the fall. But not this time! Free that prisoner. Unmoved woman. This woman stands at the back of the crowd, arms crossed and eyes cool as she watches the slow execution. Unlike the others, she's also watching the people in the crowd. <sighs> depressing. If you find it depressing, why are you watching it? I was just walking by. I don't know why I stopped, really. Something in her manner makes it, you feel like there's more to it than that, however. You stopped because you want to do something. You want to be the one to make a difference. Me? But what can I do? I'm a nobody. All I can do is watch. I've seen you watching the crowd. You outnumber the levies four to one. They just need a leader. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, wow. That's... That's some difficult persuasion here. Let's just, yeah, like... Okay, let's, let's move her. But still... A leader? I've never... No, you're right. That's why I'm here. And someone has to do something. Why shouldn't that somebody be me? Why shouldn't I be the hero for once? I'm ready. Let's end this. Spectator, horrified man. Yeah, horrified man. You're going to be the easiest to convince, I bet. This man... The man stares at the execution in utter horror. He cannot look away. No crime deserves such a punishment. How can this be allowed? Why is everyone watching this? The animals, they find pleasure and cruelty. What exactly is happening here? A waking nightmare. They call it an execution. Uh, the unfortunate victim is pulled into a, put into a trance. It forces him to speak his nightmares. His words spill out of him as a rip of flesh, which is wrapped around his body until it crushes him to death. He shakes his head. And the dignity doesn't end when the poor wretch finally dies, for then the devourer of wrongs eats his flesh. The uh, the horror of it will deter others from crime. Out of nonsense. Punishment for bad behavior won't change a man. Reward for good behavior is much more effective. If that's what really matters to the authorities, this is nothing more than a spectacle. Uh, a, an amusement for the masses. What if I joined you? Together we could give the city authorities 
what they deserve. Punish the punishers? Are you saying we should interrupt the execution? You said the punishment should not be allowed. Did you mean it? Can a man, can a just man stand by when injustice is the law? My friend, I'm a cow. I always have been. You're right. If a man does not stand by his beliefs, what is he? I'll do it. For justice. Okay. Intrigued woman. Aha! One last person. This woman listens intently to the ravings of the man on the nearby dais. Hanging on every word, she gives you a hesitant smile. You don't understand it. I know, speaking great wisdom. If only I could decipher it. What if I told you he was innocent? That would be terrible, wouldn't it? But his words seem so wise. Even if that were true, a wisdom gained through another man's pain. It, uh, so you'd stand by and let an innocent man die just to gain wisdom. I didn't know. That would make me appear heartless, wouldn't it? To tell the truth, I still want to hear his words. Does it matter? He's going to die no matter what I do. What he says could be important. As important as an innocent man's life. Help me save him. Wisdom can be gained without harming another. So I could do the 75 here. As could Calistage. Uh, and he could do 80. And we'll be out of intellect points. Yeah, let's do that. That's fine. You're right. I have to put my curiosity... I put my curiosity above a man's life. I will do this. Eating the overseer. The levies edge back. They're normally pleasant expressions turning into uncertain frowns. The overseer directly points at you. I saw what you did, you rabble rouser. This is your doing. Well, I'm not risking my life to intervene in the fate of a worthless piece of belly trash. You want him? You take him. The overseer signals the levies. Unmake the prisoner's death and retreat. He isn't worth our blood. At his order, one of the levies takes out a device like a circular mirror and squeezes its frame. The mirror spins, flashing shards of light across the death and umbilical viscera it is wrapping around Reese, and all of it disintegrates. Soon Reese stands alone on the platform as reddish dust swirls away from him. <laughs> Annotate of my logbook. Nice. That's. I guess it's another way of saying, updated my journal. There, the, cries the overseer of the crowd. Satisfied? With that, he and the levies turn and march away as the crowd surrounds the platform and cheer. Oh yeah, first quest done. As the levies march off and the crowd disperses, Reese steadies himself, not quite recovered from his ordeal. Finally, he raises his head and focuses on you. If you're the one that got me out of that nightmare, thank you, but where's that? His eyes settle on Tiber. There you are, you slippery bastard. Now where's the money? If I went through all that hell for nothing, I'll... He chokes with emotion. A whole day, Tiber. I spilled my guts up there for a whole day. Tiber steps back, spreading his hands. Uh, yes, about the money. You see, Reese, I was hoping to get a reward for turning in the fellow that, who sold us that brandy without telling us about its secrets, but... But, there's always a but when it comes to money, isn't there? Shouldn't have known. You said you'd only pay me so... You only said you'd pay me so I wouldn't squeal on you. And you only saved my skin to save your own. He smacks his fists together. Now, I'm going to have to fight through your... Am I going to have to fight through your friends to get to you? Or are you going to step out from behind him and take it like a man? Calm down, both of you. Reese, tell it from the beginning. Reese spits and wipes his lips. In much to tell. Captain Silvertongue here has talked me into a dirty job, then disappeared like an abacus and left me holding the bag when it all went sour. Oh, Reese, can you blame me for running when I had a chance? You would have done the same. And besides, if I hadn't, we would have both been sentenced to die with no one to free either of us. You only wanted to free me because you knew you'd be next on the block once the devourer ate me. The devourer would have found you guilty, Tiber. Is this true? As far as it goes, he would have he would have learned about me if he'd eaten Reese, and I did manage to escape the levies when they showed up looking for us, but I didn't abandon you, lad. He puts his hand to his heart. Reese, I escaped the levies and saved you from the devourer of wrongs because I love you and didn't want to see you to die. You have to believe me. Do I? Reese says, cracking his knuckles.
What was the job? Tiber said we were transporting black market booze to Mirajola, but he didn't tell me that he hidden state secrets in one of the wine bottles. Using some damn liquid luminaire trick, we turned a slap on the wrist crime into a damn death sentence. Death sentence? Tiber says with an exhum. You're alive, aren't you? Uh, he gl wrist glares at Tiber from under lower brows. That may be, but you certainly seem to know when the levies were going to come calling. He looks at you. Council somehow got wind of the deal and came after us. Funny how I was the only one home when they knocked on the door. So, what do you intend to do about this? Reese, is there going to be a fight? Reese, he looks ser like he's seriously considering it, but he shakes his head. Not now, not alone, but I know a few others who the cap knows. Now he's rich, we might make a body of it one night. Reese, you don't know what you're talking about. I never got paid. I promise you. This is no V self servant bastard. Reese jabs a finger in Tiber's face. Hide behind your friend if you like, but he won't keep you safe forever. Why did I pick that voice? That's kind of strange to do. Okay. Anyway, whatever. And we are halfway to our first level. Who are these people? I have never talked to them, and they have names. Child skids to a halt and rubs his forehead with a grimy forearm, leaving arrow tracks of dirt across his ruddy skin. Hey, Shiva, he pants, shading his eyes from the sun, grinning up. Never seen you before. You called me Shiva, what does that mean? Huh? Really? You never heard it? No. Nervous blush colors his cheeks. It doesn't seem like he's afraid of you, though. It's not mean. Uh, not really. It's a nickname for adults. Jerem glances at your face and goes for it. Some adults are nice to kids, right? Pat on the head, here's a flower, bit of an ash, whatever. Some are not so nice. They cast. They shove us aside when we're in the way. Kids remember shoves more than smiles, so shiver. Do you like playing in the market? No, it's best better than school, eh? And I like watching Zalfie make sculptures. The ones that go sharp and curly. Reminds me of the monster on the side of Scarahall. Scarahall? Is that a building? Yeah, Shiva. Jerem says, chuckling. It's just a building at the center of town. Thousand ads tall with a mural on the side like Zalfie's sculpture. But flattened in purple rock. Don't think you're going to miss it if you look for it, eh? A wave of dizziness clutches at you and you close your eyes to steady yourself. You kneel in a basement amid rotting rolls of carpet and broken furniture, a stack of paintings draped in dust and mold. Lean against the sweating wall, the painting in front displays the building Jerem is speaking of, but through this, mi this body, this mind, you remember that it was torn down centuries ago to uh, build a forgotten ruler's palace. The stink of the basement flees your nostrils as you open your eyes. Jerem, fidgeting, has looked away from you to examine an interesting stall. Uh, why are you so dirty? I know, but Jerem Kellen will make me wash twice a day. Guess the dirt just likes me, eh? Don't your parents worry about you running around here alone? My parents? You mean Badger and Kellenor? They're watching me until my Mod and Zero come back for me. What do Mod and Zero mean? Huh? Mod, Zero, my parents. You asked me about them. Padre and Kelenor are taking me, care of me until they come back. The words tickle your memory. Your eyelids flutter and you see hands, not yours, carefully turning the crackling pages of an ancient book. The roving eye catches the word Mod and Zero, old, old words for mother and father. Blinking hard, you focus on Jerem once more. He does not appear to have noticed your sudden fugue, but he's not looking at you either. You keep using words I don't recognize. Where did you hear them? Jerem's face goes white. Uh, I'm not allowed to tell adults about that. Or where I'm from. His gaze steals to Padra and Kelenor, both of whom are suddenly taking a far greater interest in your conversation. Don't ask, eh? Oh, I hate to see this. Tybus says, raising his eyes to the sky. Such a bright and promising lad, and he's already keeping terrible secrets from his elders. What? 
Jerem says, squinting up at him. No, it's not like that. It's nothing rancid. I just promise to stay quiet, right? Toby gives you a barely perceptible jerk of you, his chin, urging you on. Uh, he's right, Jerem. You shouldn't be ashamed of the truth. Tyber nods in solemn agreement. You can't help but notice that he looks somewhat ashamed. Jerem wavers, looking between his adopted parents and the two of you. Finally, he gives up. All right, I guess I can tell you, but you can't spread it around, okay? All right, tell me where you're from. Here, Shiva. I'm from here. It just up and changed without me. I grew up in the downs. My parents lost their spots on the work chain. We went to sleep hungry more and more. Neither of them could look at me without crying. But everyone in the downs was starving. It wasn't anything new. People started using that archway more and more. What are the downs? If you weren't in the families in the up, everywhere else was downs. In the wreckage. We'd go dig deep looking for food first. Warm second. My neighborhood was inside this curvy spiral. If you've seen the paintings of a seashell, it's like that. Tell me about this archway you mentioned. Big thing. Always good smells coming out of it too. Like roasted meat in sunny days. I used to watch it. I was never sure what it was for, you know? And the parents in the Downs never talked about it either. Then one morning, I saw Corner, a friend of mine, and her mod go up. Mod gives her a kiss, sends her through, and Corner never come out again. You know what it did though? Uh, bloody bones. God, Shuffer, Jerem says, eyeing you with disrespect. Wish that were true. Be a lovely story. But no, it was a metal ring, he says, lowering his voice to a confidential whisper. It didn't look to be worth much, but everyone, every once in a while you'd hear Corner laughing. Wherever she was, she was happy, right? He raises a hand to his cheek, then continues. A handful of days pass, and Maud takes me for a walk too. She said she'd find me when they'd saved the money. Kiss me and push me through it. Woke up outside another archway up in Government Square. Padre and Gellin are waiting for me there. Not so bad. Keep hoping my parents will stop by to visit, even if they don't have the money yet, right? He pauses, rubbing at the sudden moisturous eyes. Try to laugh a lot so they can hear me there. Uh huh. So, he's from the past. Let's talk to Prata. In the shadows cast by the folds of this merchant's cowl, you glimpse hints of verdant chitin and amber mandibles erupting from pale human flesh. The voluminous robes cannot hide the fact that her movements are off, as if too many joints inhabit too little space, but her voice, her voice is warm, tumbling flood of spoken thoughts and impulses. A fair afternoon to you, warm, isn't it? Something begins humming in one of her many pockets, and her brilliant, multifaceted eyes flicker towards an invisible point in the distance. Well, not as warm as it could be, but this is the warmest minute of the week by a considerable margin. She trails off, but the hum continues. Oh, you have one of those tattoos too. Anyway, can I interest you in some prime artifacts? Dusty relics? Numenera of uncertainty origin? You, um, you appear to be transforming into an insect? I know, isn't it fantastic? I think I might have caused it by intermingling fields of the Numenera I used to organize my thoughts. The ones I'm selling, maybe all of them, never know how such a variety of ciphers will interact with each other. They're such fun! Uh... Okay? Sure? Tell me about the Numenera you used to organize your thoughts. Oh, it's simple, sort of. Prada pulls three tiny Numenera from her robes. A buzzing bird figurine, a green music box, and a circular spring. I have too many thoughts. If I tried to hold them all in one brain, I'd just stand and drool. You know, so each of these have a slightly different purchase, purpose. Which do you want to hear about first? Uh, bird figuring. That is pretty simple. If I'm wondering with a great thought I don't have time to complete, I shut it into her so I can pick it up later. She does make everything smell like berries, though. Uh, music box. Jade box is not a tough old lady. If I'm rolling with more complex line of thinking, I ring her up and she jumps the individual ideas and feeds them back to me. I try to use her as little possible because she gives me headaches. No, what's the opposite? Headaches? Anyway, they're worse than headaches because you can't go around thinking everything's alright. It's bad for your health. Circular spring. That's rounder. She is a bit scary. She, I can shunt a bunch of thoughts into her, but she doesn't process them. She gives, gives them back to me. Slightly changed and infinitely better than when they went in. I try not to use her too much. Feels like cheating. Uh, I'd like to buy one. I hate to say so, say no, but I haven't seen some living. Little, they're practically my family. Let's talk about something else then. I 
I'm looking for someone who can repair a complex machine. Can you help? Oh, I'd love to. Complex machines are my favorite, but no, I shouldn't. I'm really behind on work orders this month. This may be a strategy, but I'm very, very easily distracted. You're better off with someone else. Sorry. So someone else had my tattoo. Who? All right, pay a lady. She wanted me to fix an artifact to hers, but I couldn't make any sense of it. And that's rare, believe me. I feel sorry for her. To tell you the truth, she seemed sad. Like she'd lost something and was never going to get it back. Let me see what you're selling. Okay. So she's a cipher merchant. She sells seashells by... No, that's my stuff. Um, so she sells some healing items. This could be useful just because it's a replacement for resting. Refills. This is a free rest for everyone. I can see why that's valued at 44. I'll definitely sell one of these oddities. Um. Hmm. Uh. Do, 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 do. Uh, and that's a consumes I yeah reconstitutor is a heal. Right, this doesn't yeah no it does refill health as well. Interesting. Third man yeah okay. So if I were to sell this, I could do this. Ciphers are killing me. And then I can basically palm this off onto Tiber. And I could also give some to Calistage at some point. That would be a good idea. But yeah, okay. That's. Because there, yeah, that's a fully fledged cipher. Gotcha. Let me just read it. So this small stone statue of a man is cunningly carved. Something resembles music playing for it, filling the minds of the user and its allies with the hope and belief that victory is not only possible, but. Inevitable, no matter what the odds are being faced. And so this is like a healing item of lower cost, but it isn't a cipher, which is a key distinction. Okay. Of course. So now uh, I think we will just have a quick discussion with these two. See what we get. This couple stands together, their shared gaze fixed away from you. No words pass between them. Instead, they share a silent language of tenderness. Their bodies turn subtly towards each other, forming a private space between them. His hand reaches for hers, and without looking, she claims it. Still looking past you, they smile together. His is a curving line in oak. Hers is unabashed and radiant as lantern on a starless night. Turning, you see the object of their attention, a young boy darting between the stalls, playing in the dust. Each distant, exhilarated shout widens their respective smiles and tightens their grip on each other. Is that your son? Yes. Kelenor says firmly. He's still watching the boy, but a wary stillness has spilled into his posture. Padra swats his shoulder, and there's much more punch than playfulness. Not yet, she says. We adopted Jerem, and we're waiting to see how he feels about that, aren't we, Kelenor? His eyes flicker stubbornly, but he doesn't respond. Why did you decide to adopt him? Well, Kellen and I, we've been trying we've been together for how long? Years, Kellen says a glint in his eye. And we knew we wanted children, so we tried and tried. We tried a lot. Some days I barely had time to put my clothes on before Kel took them off again. Interesting, go on. <laughs> Padre raises her eyebrows, right, but continues. Well, there was poor Ken, practically falling asleep on shift, forgetting his trousers half the time, and with nothing to show for it but a glow on my cheeks. Clearly, we were working with a barren field. Or faulty seeds, Kellenor adds, deadpan. Does run in the family. So we decided to find a child who needed a home, rather than getting old trying to make one of our own. That answer your question? <laughs> I'm sorry, you need more details. Ha! I like this one, girl. He hardly blushed at all. She leans in and lowers her voice. We can ask this question a lot, and finally we found a way. We found that being explicit about the process usually makes the questions just melt away. You've been talking to the wrong sorts of people, then. 
Oh, sorry, wrong person. Here, I've been talking to the wrong sorts of people, then, Tyva says, grinning over at you. We just love asking questions. Kelenor chuckles at this, but says nothing more. What brings you here? Jerem likes it, Kelenor says. The stern expression around his stern eyes softens somewhat. We don't have much time between shifts. All money to spend on fripperies, we bring him to the market when we can and watch him play. It's better than a night at the theatre. And Kelenor raises their clasped hands and kisses her bruised knuckles. Jerem told me about the door he went through to get here. What's going on? Had to pry, didn't you? Kelenor growls. Calm down, pal. Paja says, putting a hand on his chest. Stranger, can we convince you to leave this alone? Please, let's save your family. I want to know what's going on here. I'm not going to tell anyone. She bites her lip and searches her eyes. Kelenor's hand slides over her shoulder to cup the back of her neck. Maybe you're true to your word, and maybe you're not. The more we argue, the more likely Jerem will ever hear. Her eyes shift to you, wearying, weary and despairing. Jerem got here through the House of Empty Time. He comes from Sagus, like us, only centuries in the past. That's why his speech is different, why he remembers places down here anymore. Keep this to yourself. We'll tell him ourselves. We find a way of letting a child know that everyone he knows and loves is long dead and dust. I won't be the one to tell him, but you should, and soon. You're right, and we will, I promise. Tell me more about the House of Empty Time. We don't know any more than we tell you. Find the house's keeper and ask her. Her name was, she trails off, forehead creased and thought, Alchen Peri. Kelena says, oh, sorry, Alchen Peri. Kelena says, keeper of the House of Empty Time. You might find her in Government Square. Thank you, Kel. I couldn't hold on to a name if it was buried in a bag of shims, Pudger says cheerfully. Anyway, at the very moment we decided to adopt, she was knocking on our door. We were nervous, but you can't argue with the results. She beams at you. Uh, it, she beams past you, Sharon. Alright, that's pretty cool. And that's like an interesting concept. Like, a, uh, inter-chronological, uh, adoption agency but that's pretty interesting I and I definitely didn't run across this in any of the previous playthroughs I think Rin may also get involved with that and it explains what that arch is in Government Square so that's pretty cool I'm definitely gonna spend some more time exploring the parts of the market I haven't gotta find new things each time so can't just stick to the main story hope you're enjoying this See you next time. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you spending the time and effort watching the videos I make. Uh, if you'd like to watch more, on the left there should be another video from this playlist. On the right there will be whatever YouTube recommends. And in the center there is a convenient subscribe button just in case you need it.